This is the start of our benchmarking of uh, 950 GTX Extreme from Gigabyte. We're using our, um, our, our, our standard gaming PC as a benchmark. The, the first benchmark we have here is user benchmark, which is basically a site where you can test your own computer and see what you're getting compared to other um, users with similar, similar setups. It basically gives us a battle cruiser rating for desktop, a speedboat for gaming, and a workstation, which is not very relevant for here. Overall, what it says is it's the, the CPU score is very good, the memory is very good, the graphics is a bit below average, but the average they're using here is a 980, which is well, you wouldn't expect a 950 to get to a 9, 980 score. Um, what, what it's saying, four people with the i5-6600, we, we scored in the 62nd percentile. That means the setup that, you ha that we have here with the RAM and the motherboard actually makes the CPU perform above average, which is what, what we aim for. The graphics card, however, is below expectations, and the reason for that is quite simple. We've stuck to gigabytes standard overclocking um, options here, whereas um, this is a user benchmark, so it, it you'd get a lot of people um, overclocking these cards quite a bit, which you can do uh, if you have one of them, but um, for benchmark purposes, we keep it at um, the stock overclocking that Gigabyte does. The hard drive in our test bench is, uh, performs very well. It says we're performing in the 89th percentile for this hard drive. So it, again, it's, it's just an indication that it's a very good match, this hard drive, to this setup. Um, it's, the, this is the not using the SSD bot. We got 154 megabytes per second, which is quite impressive. And then uh, what we're using in here is the option with the two 8 gig DIMMs, which again, it says for 16 gig DDR4 clocked at that speed, we're actually in the 92nd percentile, meaning we're doing a lot better with the setup than than what is what is the average. Again, this is due to um, we we really try and do our homework here at Easy Gamer and try to to match components that really would work well together. Let's move on to the next test. Uh, here's what we got in Firestrike. Uh, we just ran the standard Firestrike at P1080. We got a score of 3,812. You can have a look here at the individual graphics and physics scores and the combined score. Um, this is fairly respectable. It's sort of what we'd expect from a, from a 950. Um, what's very nice, if you have a look here at the temperatures, is the CPU stayed around 40 and the graphics card never really got over about 55, which is quite a nice nice thing. It means it's these synthetic benchmarks are designed to push the PC. And the cooling is very well sorted out. We don't have any issues on that. If we look at the compared results, we, it, as expected with a, a graphics card of this level, we're fairly low on the charge, charts here. But it's the, 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 that's the, the point of this is to Get a card that can actually play some games at P1080, and it's not um, meant to be a hardcore gaming PC where you'd set everything to ultra. Here we have Dota. Into the breach. We have everything set uh, to maximum, and we're running sort of mid uh -huh. 80 frames per second. It occasionally dips down into the 70s but it seems to uh, be running very uh -huh. smoothly. I'm have a look at the settings. 30 it's, seconds it's, to battle. Um, at P1080 and it's set to best looking. Here we have uh, Counter-Strike GO. We've, it's at running at P1080 with everything set to max. As you can see, we're running very high frame rates. Seven to eight frames per second here again. So no problem with that. Secure that weapon. It seems to be receiving The bomb is down. Two guys left. 
Here we have Civilizations 5. Um, just to give you, this give is you a an good idea, place we just started a, a quick game. We have Food and resources running are plentiful here. about 120, 140 frames per second. Now, with something like Civilizations, it's not a bad idea to um, have a bit higher frames than you need, but 60 is probably fine, because for a, a strategy game that isn't a fast-paced one, especially something I like this, some which is a turn-based thing, um, it's not a problem if you if you run a little Excuse bit me. Uh, lower. If, if, as long as you stay over about 30 frames per second, normally doesn't bother you. The settings we're using here to get this, it's, it's work running nice and smoothly. Uh, I'll quickly show you. It, we've set it to use its defaults. Its defaults that it went to for the system was two anti-aliasing, medium, few set settings high, few settings medium. The reality is we can probably crank that up a bit, but um, the look of the game already looks quite nice. So it is running Civilizations 5 on this, definitely not an issue at all. Here we have Call of Duty 5. Uh, bit of an older one, it's still a classic. As we've set everything to maximum except anti-alias thing has been turned off and it seems to be running very nicely at 90 frames per second which is perfect because that means we can get quite a bit um, bit going here before we uh, even have the slightest uh, issues in terms of performance going down. Yep, it seems to be running perfectly. Here we have Skyrim, if with everything set to absolutely maximum at P1080. And um, unfortunately on Skyrim you can't seem to turn off vertical sync, so you always have um, it limited to 60 frames per second. But as you can see here when we have the smoke effects here, it, it, it drops down to about 55, which is okay. But we've, we're here at a scene where we have very far draw distances and we can really see what's going on. Visuals look great, as Skyrim does, and it um, yeah, seems to be running perfectly, everything set to maximum. Here we have Borderlands the pre-sequel, with everything set to high at B108. You see we're sort of right at the sort of edge of where you would want to be. Warning, no atmosphere detected. Around, uh, around 60 frames per second. I see we drop down a little bit there. Let's see what happens if we get into the It has got uh, a 
killed your computer, or at least killed your graphics card mode called Ultra, which I will demonstrate here now. Here we have Fractured Space. This is a newer title which is seriously graphics intensive and um, as you can see we're not running it at the highest resolution here. This is a game with action which actually has quite insane graphics. But here we have it P1080 with basically everything set to low and um, we're getting nice playable, playable frames but we are just over 60, so it is. This is when you get to this kind of game, is where you would really want to get a higher card if you um, want to get uh, quick frames at high settings. Just to, just for a test, just want to see what happens if we set everything to ultra in here. But I have a feeling we're going to get silly slow frames per second on this one. Right. As you can see the visuals look quite amazing on this one with everything set to ultra. And we're actually getting not unplayable frames. Unfortunately this is not one of the friendly games. They take away um, Steam's frames per second um, indicator on here but, but it is it is playable I'd say it's actually surprisingly smooth for a card like this With, it might get a little bit more interesting as if we have more ships in the area but overall very impressed with this actually yeah seems to be running smooth enough. Not sure exactly what the frames per second is here, but it um, doesn't seem to be getting jittery, and we're running everything on Ultra. And at the um, time of making this, this was one of the, the newest games available on the market. Extreme Gaming's Time Spy Score, as expected, with a uh, lower end card, it won't be that great. We got a 1616 score, which compared to the, the if you compare that to the 970, which is uh, a good benchmark, the 970 got 3738. So we're quite a bit behind that. We've got about three times as much as what they consider a gaming laptop, which this being a graphics card, which is quite a decent one for P1002 gaming, makes sense. But we're be only better than 5% of the results. If you take that into, uh, if you want to take the 970 back into the equation, the 970 was better than 32% of the results. So we're quite a bit behind something like the 970, but we are at a much cheaper price point. But um, if you are considering this card, have a look at uh, the 970 or um, the 1060, the newer, newer version basically. Um, as value per as price per performance, they do offer a, a bit better. But overall, if this is what you can afford, it's still a very, very good card.